Welcome to the webinar about NEON usage-based pricing. NEON Pay Tier was launched just recently this month, and the first charges for paying users will happen soon. So whether you're a current NEON user or yet considering adopting the platform, it's crucial to understand how this new pricing model works and how it will impact your costs. This webinar will provide you with the knowledge you need to understand your NEON usage and storage costs. So, Recently, Neon paid tiers were released. You can find pricing documentation on the website. The free tier is still there. It can be used to explore platform or for hobby projects with limited usage. But if you want to go beyond the limits and use all Neon features, you can, use, you can switch to the pro plan. This plan is usage-based, which means that you only pay for the actual consumption of resources so-called pay-as-you-go model. At the end of the billing period, you will receive an invoice with the cost broken down by billing metrics. Let me explain our reasoning behind these consumption metrics and also share some insights that will help you to estimate and optimize your NEON bills. Before we start, let's have a quick look at the NEON architecture again so that we were on the same page. Your application first connects to Postgres Compute which is basically a normal Postgres backed by Neon storage. Compute streams all data changes to the wall service, which is responsible for durability of recent updates. Then this wall is passed to the page server, processed there, and then uploaded to the cloud S3 storage. As you can see, there are many moving parts in the system, but we only use for billing those consumption metrics, which end users can control. Neon charges on four usage metrics, compute time, written data, data transfer, and project storage. You can find them in the usage panel on a project page. There you will see accumulated values for a current billing period and also current values, such as your current project size. Let's take a closer look at each of the metrics. The first usage metric is the compute time. It reflects the amount of resources used by Neon Compute. This one will affect the price most significantly for active projects. Compute time is calculated as a compute size multiplied by active time. The compute size is configurable. One compute can use from one quarter up to seven compute units, where each compute unit provides one virtual CPU and four gigabytes of RAM. By default, compute uses one CU size. You can change this setting in the endpoint configuration. This is a per endpoint met metric, which means that it depends on the number of running compute endpoints. There are two more things that affect compute time metric. Currently, Neon turns the compute off after five minutes of inactivity. This, this scaling down to zero ensures that you don't over provision resources and never overpay for idle projects. The downside of this is some connection latency increase due to start compute startup time. Currently, compute cold start time is around four seconds, and we're working on improving it further. Still, for some low latency use cases, it may be better to keep compute always on. New feature for configuring auto suspend timeout is coming soon. And next feature that affects compute time is auto scaling. This is the newest Neon feature, currently available to paid tier users in feature preview mode. Auto scaling feature allows you to set minimum and maximum number of CUs for each endpoint, and the real number of active compute units will scale up and down based on the workload. It can be a game changer for projects with a load that can fluctuate significantly. For more details on this topic, check the presentation about autoscaling by my colleague M. Sharnov on these dev days. Next metric is written data. It shows the amount of data written by PostgreSQL for data changes. In other words, this is the size of the wall generated by PostgreSQL. The price for this metric reflects our internal, internal wall service costs. If you're using multiple write branches, this metric is calculated independently for each branch and summed up at the end of a billing period. 
On this slide, you can find some rough estimates of wall size generated by different SQL operations. For ordinary workload, such as inserts, updates, and data upload, the amount of wall is usually proportional to the amount of data. Note that Postgres background and utility commands such as vacuum and auto vacuum can also generate some wall. And finally, note that failed transactions also generate same amount of wall. To measure the exact size uh, of wall generated by your query, you can use Postgres function pgcurrentwallLSN to get the latest wall position before and after query. And use pgwallLSN div to calculate the difference between LSNs. This will be your written data size. To optimize this metric, you can use batch operations where possible to eliminate wall metadata overhead. For example, use copy for data loading instead of multiple separate insert statements. Where applicable, you can also use drop and truncate for deleting data in bulk instead of using just delete command. And also consider using temporary and unlocked tables for data that doesn't need to be persistent. But beware that they are not persistent and the data will be lost after compute shutdown, even in the case of the automatic comp compute suspension. Next metric is data transfer. This is the amount of bytes transferred out of Neon database to the client, outbound traffic only. Data transfer is charged by the cost set by cloud provider. Currently, Neon is based on AWS, and we have plans to support other cloud providers in the future. And finally, the most Neon-specific metric of all, project storage. To provide branching, time travel, and other Neon features, we reinvented the Postgres storage format. For example, we store data and history together in a custom format, and branches are implemented as copy and write clones of this data. To dig into details, you can check our architecture documentation. So uh, to build for this, we introduced synthetic storage size metric that reflects the size of data and history stored for your Neon projects. History is the Postgres wall uh, write ahead log retained for a certain period of time, also known as a point in time restore window. It supports time travel and restoring past states. So it serves as a kind of backup that allows you to roll back to the past state of the database. Default point in time restore window is one week. We have plans to make this window conf configurable in upcoming releases. Since the project size may change with time and it may not only increase, but also decrease, this metric is defined as project storage size multiplied by time stored, multiplied by price per hour. So let's now look at the examples of how storage size is calculated for different use cases. First, let's look at the hypothetical case where we have only one branch and don't store any history. Actually, it's possible in reality when you just created a new project and never used it, never uploaded any data. So in this case, the project size equals the logical size of the branch. This includes size of all databases in your Neon project and some PostgreSQL metadata. It is almost equal to the data size that you would see in a standalone Postgres installation. So if you actually use your project, Neon additionally stores wall within point in time restore interval. In this case, project storage equals data size at the beginning of this interval. So with default Neon setting, this means the data size a week ago, plus amount of wall history generated since this moment. The history size is the same size as written data that we discussed above. If you're actively using branching, things get more interesting. Neon implements branching using copy and write, and we account for that in our consumption metrics. So when Neon branch is created, it doesn't add anything to the project size, except for a tiny amount of metadata. When the child branch grows, its wall is added to the project size. So the project size is calculated as data size at snapshot moment, 
um, plus amount of changes in both branches. But what will happen when the history will diverge a lot? With time, branch moves forward, main branch moves forward, and the branch point of a child falls out of the parent's history window. In this case, the child's snapshot is no longer shared with the parent, and it is accounted separately. The project size in this case is defined as if these two branches were absolutely independent. So it's data size at the snapshot for both branches plus wall changes for both branches. The storage price is small relative to the other metrics. So this won't have a huge impact on your bills until storage gets quite big. But if you use many branches, they may affect this metric. So the optimization advice here is to remove unneeded branches after you're not using them anymore. Each project is different and so are the consumption profiles. So we have a calculator on the pricing page where you can estimate the usage-based costs for your project. As you can see on this slide, uh, for most project, projects, uh, most significant consumption metric is compute time, but data transfer can also be impactful. That's it. So today we learned about four metrics that are used for NEON billing. I hope this knowledge will make your NEON experience more comfortable and predictable. And you can always find detailed and up-to-date description and documentation, as well as prices for each supported region. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them on our community forum.